Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to this quick tutorial on how to set up parallax mapping in Stingray. So you might be asking, well, what is a parallax map and what will it do for you? And that's a, a good question because on the right here we have a normal map. And as you can see, we're getting some decent definition and we're getting these bricks to feel like they're kind of elevated from the surface. But what often will be the case is that you just can't push these normal maps far enough and you just can't really get that definition to really pop and feel like it's got depth. And in this case, that's exactly where you're going to want to start using parallax mapping. It's not perfect for everything, but it is really useful for things like stone walls or for um, things where you want to drive a lot more depth, uh, like you know cracks in pavement or things like that. So here on the left, we can actually see an example of a parallax map, and it's got a lot more definition. We're getting more depth out of it. We're starting to feel like it's got some shadowing in here, and it's got just a bit more depth than what our normal map will do. So, you know, that's basically the point of a parallax map. It's kind of like a, a, a normal map on steroids. And uh, this tutorial is going to run you through exactly how to set that up in Stingray and uh, make it work to your advantage. One of the other nice things is we can actually set up some basic adjustments to be able to push that map a, a bit further than, than you know, uh, a normal map could ever go. So here I'm just kind of pushing the height a little bit and getting it to stand out a little bit even more than it was. And we can adjust things like the scale and uh, the bias in order to kind of get this to feel even better than, than, it, than it did a second ago. So we can go 0.2 and you know maybe 0.02 and kind of see how that, that works out. And as you can see, we can really start pushing this depth. Um, you will get some minor stretching. Uh, that's, that's kind of part and parcel if you start pushing it too far. Uh, but sometimes that can be okay, you know, like at a distance. Um, you know, this is really feeling much more, you know, depth than this one on the right. This one's starting to feel flat now comparatively, okay? So, uh, so, so that's basically the concept. And uh, now I'm gonna show you how that kind of functions in Stingray. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is set up our maps to, uh, to work. So one of the things we're going to need is a height map, okay? Um, normally, with our normal maps, if I were to look at our normal map, it's just going to consist of our standard materials, right? A color, a normal, and a roughness, metallic, and ambient, okay? Um, and we have a, a scale, which is here just to be able to change the size overall of our scale. Uh, just something I put in there for us to be able to play with. Uh, and, and kind of test the different differences. So I'm going to include these two shaders for you um, and we're going to go through basically what they're doing and how they work. Okay, so um, but yeah, first thing we're going to need to do now is take a look at how this stuff kind of gets set up. So we need that that height map uh, that does not exist for the RMA, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. So what I did was I basically just took one of the standard materials from inside of Substance Designer and I just mapped the outputs, okay? So what I've got is uh, my standard color map, my standard uh, normal map, my standard roughness map, a metallic map, which is basically no metallic, and our ambient occlusion. And then what I did was I just bound uh, the roughness, metallic, and ambient occlusion, which are these three here. Uh, because these are grayscale, um, in order to kind of make it more efficient, uh, what I've done is I've bound them together and kind of output them to one singular map. Roughness gets mapped to the red channel, the uh, metallic gets mapped to the green channel, and the ambient occlusion gets mapped to the, the, the blue channel. So that's going to be our R, G, and B channels. So the reason that we call it an RMA is because it's going roughness, metallic, ambient occlusion. Okay, and then we're binding all of those together into one RGB map. So now we're not going to be wasting. So rather than wasting four channels on our roughness, four channels on our metallic, and four channels on our ambient occlusion, instead we're just using one channel for roughness, one channel for uh, metallic, and one channel for ambient occlusion. Okay, um, I go into this into more detail in other uh, tutorials, so I won't waste too much time on this, but that's basically what I've done. Um, and then I just simply output on my export outputs. I don't output the roughness, the metallic, or the ambient occlusion. Instead, I just output this RMA, which is this bottom output here, okay? 
Uh, so so that, that takes care of our roughness, metallic, and ambient occlusion. We've got our normal map like we always do. We have our color map like we always do. And the last thing is this height map. And in this case, I simply just output from the, from the height on this, this shader. So it was you know, extremely straightforward. Uh, but if you wanted to get another way to get your height, and what you can do is just simply hit the space bar and say height, and you'll see this normal to height, okay? And from the normal, you can then plug that into your height, and now you're gonna get more or less the same thing, okay? So these two are very similar. In fact, they're identical. Okay, so anytime you have a normal map, you can just convert it to a height map in Substance Designer just like that. And then you're just going to plug that into your height map, you know, basically. But uh, in this case, I just had that output, so I just used it, um, and I'm pretty much good to go. All right, so, so that's basically all I did. And then I export the outputs, as I said before. So I have my base color, I have my normal map, I have my roughness, metallic, and ambient occlusion map, I have my height map. Okay, and then I just hit save. Now all of these maps are gonna be included in the goodies folder and I've stored that on my desktop here. So if we look into my parallax map tutorial, which you're gonna get as your, your sample project, inside the goodies folder, you're gonna see that I have all the textures output for you. Okay, so you can test right away uh, from here. But you can do this with any material you want. You're, you're welcome to do so. In fact, I would encourage you to uh, play with this with different textures and different materials. All right, so uh, so that's our goodies, and um, you'll also notice that there's the shaders folder, which I'm going to show you how to set up, okay? So these two shaders um, are here for you to start with, um, and I'll show you how you can edit those and kind of work with them if you want to, all right? But I do include the, uh, the RMA material and the parallax material for you to use in Stingray, all right? And the last thing is just the models folder, and this just has my little model uh, of this, this kind of scene that we have right here, uh, so you can test test with as well, all right? And I'm just gonna close this down and I'm gonna go into my example project and I'm gonna wipe out this example project so we start fresh and new, all right? So that you know exactly how uh, to do this yourself, okay? So now I'm just gonna go ahead and relaunch Stingray. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply create a new template based on the basic template. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Create and I'm gonna choose that example projects folder again. Okay, so desktop, parallax map tutorial, example project, and select folder. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that. Let it start up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go new level, all right? So now I've got a new fresh level and I've got nothing in it. Uh, and this is based on the basic project, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into our content folder. And the first thing I like to do is always create a folder for my specific project. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a parallax map test, okay? So I've got my parallax map test folder. And the other folder I'm gonna to wanna to create is my shaders folder. Okay, and this is gonna contain my custom shaders. So let's just jump to the desktop really quick and let's jump into that goodies folder. So we're gonna go desktop and I'm gonna jump into my parallax map tutorial and I'm gonna go into the goodies folder. I'm gonna grab the shaders. I'm gonna select these two shaders and I'm gonna copy them and we're gonna jump back into our example project, basic project, basic project and content and shaders and I'm gonna paste these into that shaders folder, okay? So now if I look inside of Stingray, uh, we should see that we have the parallax map material and we have the RMA map material, okay? So now we have those two shaders uh, ready to use inside of our Stingray project, okay? So now what we wanna do is jump into this parallax maps test and we're gonna go import and we're gonna go into uh, that you know desktop, parallax map tutorials, goodies, models, and we're gonna grab this parallax first normals um, FBX, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and import that. And once it compiles, uh, we're gonna see that we have two, two materials here. We're gonna have one that's for the parallax map and one that's for the normal map, okay? Now, if we wanna look at this shader, we can. So let's just jump back into the shaders folder and take a look at the RMA map. Okay, now we can see here we have a color map input, a normal map input, and an RMA input, okay? And on the parallax material, we have the same things, the color, the normal, and the RMA, but we also have this height map, 
okay? And the height map is gonna give us some other abilities. We can change the height, we can change the scale, and we can change the bias. And these are directly relative to the parallax map inputs. If we go ahead and take a look at the shader graph, we're gonna see some pretty uh, you know, basic stuff here. Um, we've got our scale, which is driving the multiply of our texture coordinates. So we're being able to increase or decrease the scale of our shader in general, okay? Then we have our height map, and that's just dri being driven into this multiply, which is then multiplying against the height. So this gives us the ability to kind of push the darks of the uh, height map, okay? And then we just plug that right into our height map. Okay, on the scale side, um, all it is is a direct uh, input and we're just making that input drive the, the, the scale value of the parallax node. Okay, and the same thing is true of our bias. We're just driving the bias of, the, uh, of that node. Then we're simply uh, driving you know, the color map, the normal map and the RMA map uh, from the uh, UV channels of this output. Okay, so, um, and then lastly, uh, the only really interesting thing on this part of it is that the RMA map is now breaking down again. So we've got, as I showed you in Substance Designer, how we were breaking those pieces apart and pushing them into one uh, material. We're now just kind of doing the opposite. We're taking this RGBA and we're driving the red channel into the roughness map. We're driving the metallic channel into the green channel and we're driving the um, ambient occlusion from the blue channel, okay? So just like I showed you here, where we were breaking them, you know, uh, kind of merging them together and pushing them into one map. Here, what we're doing on this side is we're taking that same shader and we're breaking it apart so that each of the pieces are driving what they need to drive, okay? So, uh, so that's basically it with the parallax material. Um, and if we were to look at this RMA material, um, it's effectively the same thing, except it doesn't have, you know, it's even more simple. Um, it's just, you know, we're getting the scale coordinates so that we can kind of increase or decrease the size overall of our material. Um, and we're just driving the color map into the color, the normal map into the normal, and the uh, RMA, we're doing the same thing where we're breaking it down and, and putting it into its constituent uh, places, okay? So, you know, really nothing complicated here. Uh, and um, I do recommend that you look through these if you want to learn how to like kind of, you know, take this to your level, like where you want to go with it. Um, you can do a lot more than what I'm doing here. I'm just, this is the, the basics of a parallax material, okay? And this is the most uh, efficient form of RMA material you can have. I, I guess the one thing you could do to make it more efficient is remove the ability to adjust its scale. Uh, but basically it's a, it's a very efficient material. Both of these are, okay? So that's it. Uh, now what we want to do is just apply them, okay? So let's go ahead and look at our parallax map um, test, and let's just go ahead and assign each of these materials, because right now they just have the default standard material on them. Um, and this material you kind of want to stay away from in general anyway, because though it's extremely uh, easy to use and you can you know just plug your roughness map in, your metallic map, and kind of go with it, um, and it gives you a lot of different options like check boxes and all this stuff, but all these things cost, okay? And if you have a, a level that has a lot of different, you know, uses of this material, you're gonna find that your performance is gonna suffer overall. So I generally stay away from this just because it's not the most performant. It's extremely uh, comfortable to use, but it's not the most performant. So once you get used to using Stingray, you should start learning how to kind of move away from this standard shader because it is, you know, very useful and it's very comfortable to use and it's very easy to use, especially for beginners. It is really not the most uh, efficient. So anyway, I don't want to drive on that too much, but now we have here this parent resource. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go um, our, this is our normal map one. So we're just going to go RMA and we're just going to grab this shaders RMA material. Okay. And we're going to save. Okay. Now you'll notice that it turns black. That's because it doesn't have any color coming into it. So it's literally just getting no inputs and therefore it's going to turn black. We're going to fix that in a moment. Now on this parallax map, what we're going to want to do is jump in again to the parent resource and we're going to go parallax. So let's just grab this content shaders parallax map and grab that one. All right. So now these are both set and we just need to uh, kind of just put this thing on screen and see what we've got. So let's place it on screen and I've grabbed the unit and I just dragged the unit and placed it. And I'm now gonna set it to zero, zero, zero. 
And now uh, all we have to do is apply the materials to this uh, parallax map because we're all pretty much set up now. So let's just go ahead and create a new folder. Let's call this textures. And let's import our textures. So import, and we go back to the goodies folder, textures, select our textures, and go import. Okay, wait for them to compile. And once compiled, we're pretty much set to go. So now we're just going to select our normal map and double click on textures, drag the base color into the base color, drag the normal map into the normal map, and drag the RMA into the RMA channel. Okay, so we're set for that. Let's jump back into our uh, parallax map and let's do the same thing. So I'm now just selecting the parallax map, double clicking on textures, bringing base color to base color, normal to normal, RMA to RMA, and height to height. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And you'll notice that it looks kind of wonky here. Don't worry about that too much. Um, parallax maps don't generally look so good in the display viewport, um, especially if you have nothing set properly yet. So um, we're gonna go ahead and set this to 0.015, and we're gonna set this one to 0.015, and we're gonna save it. And we can take a look at our scene now. All right. So here we can see that we've got uh, the parallax map set up and it's starting to do its thing. Now on the right, we're gonna have our normal maps. On the left side, we're gonna have our parallax maps and we can kind of just start playing with the different settings inside of the, uh, the parallax map. So let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, parallax map settings and let's start driving this up here. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to now, if we push it too far, we're going to get some wonkiness going on. We don't really want that wonkiness. So I find that, you know, not, not driving it too far is probably your best bet. And you can, you know, play with a bunch of these settings. 0.02, you know, kind of feels good. Um, you know, 0.02 might feel better here on the bias. And as you can see, we're starting to get some severe depth uh, coming out of this, maybe too much even. So let's try um, just lowering this, uh, this scale a bit, 0.015. Um, and oops, 0.015, and we should be kind of feeling really good here. All right, so um, so that's basically it. That's how you set up a parallax map in Stingray. Um, do use the goodies and the resources that I've given you, and uh, feel free to uh, to you know play with this as you like. Um, it should give you a good start on how to do parallax mapping in Stingray. All right. And uh, this scale will overall change the scale. Of, um, and you can load up different textures into this basic resource so you can test with different textures. This is a nice little resource to have. I use this for you know, whenever I want to kind of see how the parallax map is working. Um, I'll use this, this model to just kind of give some basic tests. So I just load up different textures and, and try them out. Um, and it gives me a good idea of how it works versus the normal. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so that's basically it. And um, I hope you were able to keep up with me and uh, that this was useful. All right. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a nice day.